Hi Octina. So the first thing I'm going to go through today is just a really quick recap of what happens when numbers and letters actually come together and how they actually look. Um, so let's look at these three examples to begin with. So in example uh, part one, we have three multiplied by A. So in algebra, if a number and letter are multiplying by each other, you literally just have to put them together. So as I say in class, they get stuck together. So we don't bother writing down the multiplication sign anymore. We're just going to write down 3A. People sometimes ask, okay, why is the number first or the letter? There's no particular reason for that. That's just the convention that we use. So you need to make sure that you always remember that the number goes first. That states how many of those letters there actually are. Example number two, then, we have a letter multiplied by a letter. Now, in this example, it's the same letter. So we go back to our rules of indices for this one. And if you remember your rules of indices, when you multiply two letters by each other, that are, have the same base, you add their indices or you add what's on their shoulder. So Y has a little one on its shoulder and the other Y has another little one on its shoulder. So therefore, Y times Y is going to give me Y squared. And in our final example, we have numbers and letters multiplying by each other. So you need to remember that you do your numbers as you always have done your numbers, first of all. So that's 5 times 2, which gives me 10. And then A times B, they're different letters, so you can't use indices for these because they're not the same base. So therefore, you just literally stick them together, so we get an answer of 10AB. Okay, the next thing I want to explain to you, um, which maybe some of you are still confused on, is what's the difference between 2A and what's the difference between that and A squared? Because a lot of the time, students maybe give me one of these as their answers, and then they're saying, oh, well, if it's not A squared, it must be 2A. How do we know the difference? So what I want you to think about is the fact that 2a means 2 multiplied by a. That means that we have two a's. So another way of writing that would be a plus a. So if you did see a plus a written on a sheet of paper, you could then simplify that and say, well, I've got two a's, so therefore I have 2a. And we're back to where we started with. Whereas a squared is the letter multiplied by itself. So that's equals to a multiplied by a, which obviously is very different to a plus a. So just the same way, if I say to you, okay, what does 5a actually mean? That means 5 times a, which actually means a plus a plus a plus a plus a. Okay, the next thing then is if I see a question of a plus a plus a and I see another question that says a times by a times by a again what's the difference so a plus a plus a that basically means imagine they're apples we've got one apple plus another apple plus another apple therefore we can simplify that down and say we have three apples whereas in the one on the right hand side we have a multiplied by a multiplied by a in this particular instance we're using our rules of indices because they are multiplying each other and they all have the same base. So as I said in our first set of examples, each one of these A's has an invisible one on their shoulder. So because we are multiplying our rules of indices state that we add what's on their shoulders. So therefore our answer is A cubed. So I think at this point, if you're still confused, you really need to think about the fact are we adding them or are we multiplying them? And you can see where the rules are different. So when we're adding them, we're keeping the letter the same. So it was A plus A plus A, apple plus an apple plus an apple. It's still an apple, but there's just three of them. Whereas when we multiply them, that's when the indices come into play. Okay, now we're going to get into the actual, I suppose, messing around with algebra. So the first thing I want to recap is how to collect like terms. So again, remember that when you're collecting like terms, that's relating to when you're adding or subtracting algebraic terms from each other, which are in the expression. So first example is if we have 3x plus 2y um, plus 5x plus 7y. So all we need to do if we have a question like this is to collect the like terms. So I want you to underline all of the x's and then in a different colour underline all the y's. So we've got a 3x here and a plus 5x there. 
and we have a plus 2y there and a plus 7y there. So, always writing our equal sign underneath, 3x plus 5x gives me 8x, and 2y plus 7y gives me 9y. Right, so that's the first example, nice and simple, all pluses, not too difficult. The next example I'm going to show you has some minuses thrown in just to um, confuse us a little bit. So 7a minus 2b minus 5b plus 2a. Okay, do the exact same thing. Underline what they have in common um, or collect the like terms. So 7a is there and a plus 2a is there and then a minus 2b is there and a minus 5b is there. Let's have a look at what we need to add together then. 7a plus 2a, which gives me 9a. And this is where we need to be careful. Minus 2b minus 5b. So it's minus 2 minus 5. That's going to give me minus 7b. Again, if you're stuck, you can use your calculator. But literally just think, you've got minus 2 euro in your account. And then you spend another 5 euro. Therefore, you're 7 euro in debt. Okay, one more example then. We've got 5a squared plus a minus 2a squared minus 5a. Again, we're just collecting up the like terms. These questions confuse people because they think that the a squared and the a are the same, but they're different. And in algebra, you can only collect terms if they are identical. So a squared or 5a squared and minus 2a squared are identical in, in relation to the letters that are there. And a is the same as minus 5a in regards to the letters that are beside them. So let's collect up those like terms. So 5a squared minus 2a squared is going to give me 3a squared and plus a minus 5a. So I've got 1 euro, I'm minusing 5 away, therefore I have minus 4a.